So a couple of days ago, my kettle stopped working. The switch wasn't making a proper connection anymore, and unless you could be bothered to hold it down for the full two minutes it takes to boil the water, or precariously balance an object on the switch, it was basically useless. I set out to try and repair it, and I was hoping for the sake of this video to find something a bit more interesting when I got inside. In the end though, some cleaning of the internal contacts seemed to do the trick. I got lucky. Lucky because the fault was simple, mechanical, and easy to access. Lucky also because the kettle wasn't sealed or glued shut, and it didn't require the replacement of a spare part that the manufacturer probably wouldn't have sold me separately. Because when it comes to kitchen appliances, that's usually how it goes. Products fail, often because of a small basic part, that then the consumer either can't or isn't bothered to replace. In the ideal case, these products will end up at a facility like Sweep Kusikowski in the UK, which I visited earlier this year. The pile of waste pictured in the video is only a fraction of the electronic waste that will arrive in a day, which is itself only a fraction of the waste produced in the UK. The even more worrying part is that over 50% of electronic waste in the UK doesn't actually make it to these designated recycling plants. When Paul Anker's kitchen blender broke, he didn't get so lucky. So Paul Mixer blender broke uh, a couple of years back. He was coming to me, uh, but unfortunately this specific part that broke on his blender, which is the gear, like the, the coupler attached to the motor, which makes the blade spinning, uh, was uh, completely destroyed. And to put back together those two parts were technically very, very challenging uh, mm -hmm. for me, impossible to achieve. So because of uh, one small part that was broken on the blender and uh, the fact that this part was not being produced anymore, uh, he was obliged to discard uh, his blender. So it started from this. Paul Anker and Ken Rostand are founders of a startup called OpenFunk. What started as a classic startup story of an individual trying to solve a personal problem has since evolved into a mission to challenge the status quo of an entire industry. Their offering is this, a blender made of 100% recycled casing with easy to repair and modular components and an open source philosophy that gives anyone access to spare parts wherever and whenever they want. OpenFunk sent me one of their Remix blenders for this video but my intention isn't to make this a product advertisement. Instead, I hope this video could offer inspiration for what the future of product design might look like, rooted in circular economy principles, where products are designed to be repaired, adapted, and kept in use for as long as possible, rather than replaced. At the beginning, everyone in the industry you would have said, oh, this will never work, because this is what people were saying when they were uh, looking at uh, our product. Uh, well, we made it possible, and uh, so this is great. Now, there are so many things I could talk about in this video, but for me, there are three aspects of OpenFunk's design that really stand out. The first is the design itself. It's simple, it's repairable, and most importantly, it's made to never become obsolete. Obsolescence is a term that's become more spoken about recently, especially in the mobile phone industry, where hard to replace batteries, termination of software updates, and the annual lure of new products and features artificially reduce product lifespans. The result of this is that companies can sell more products because users are forced to replace them more frequently. Obsolescence manifests itself in two forms, planned obsolescence and perceived obsolescence. Planned obsolescence is when products are designed deliberately to become physically unusable after a certain period of time. This could be caused by reducing the longevity of hardware whilst blocking repair, or even more frustratingly, by cutting off product software updates. Perceived obsolescence, on the other hand, comes from rapidly bringing out new products with new features. Whilst these are often superficial or only minor upgrades, they make the user feel like their old device is no longer good enough, incentivizing them to replace it with the newest model. The Remix Blender by OpenFunk tackles both these issues. First is a modular design that lets you easily access and swap out components. Every component of the blender is available on demand for repairs, and OpenFunk offers affordable out-of-warranty repairs in their workshop in Berlin. You can even 3D print your own spare parts if you want. More on that in a bit. Since the company includes a repair service within their business model, it's in their interest to make the product easy to repair. The blender can virtually be entirely dismantled with just a screwdriver and a few different tips. 
The result of this is that even if a small component like a switch or a motor part were to break on your blender, it doesn't render the entire product useless. Now, the other aspect of the design is its simplicity. Less internal components and a lack of super complicated assemblies means faster repairs. But what I think is perhaps even more interesting is the simplicity of the blender functionality. The designers deliberately chose to omit any special blender modes or programs, instead opting for a simple physical dial with just two speeds and a pulse mode. The blender doesn't even have a PCB. It might sound like a bit of a cop-out, but it was grounded in heavy consumer research. We found out through interviews, you ask people, hey, are you really using that soup? program uh, and they go, no, I'm always using the smoothie program, for example, or <laughs> something like that. Most of the features, the advanced features of most blenders are um, not really useful. This is a similar philosophy to what the company Surrey have done with electric toothbrushes. Now, the effect of this simplification is it makes the product timeless. The product is restricted to its absolute core function and 50 years from now, it will still satisfy that function. A fancy blender with lots of modes, digital screens, and presets, on the other hand, is tied to things like current tech trends, specific user habits, and software or electronics that age quickly. When those trends or technologies inevitably change, the product feels old, even if it still works. It's why, for example, you still see designs like Levi's 501s, Bialetti Mockapots, and Brompton Folding Bicycles still in use today. Now the second aspect, and the one in which I feel OpenFunk has really differentiated themselves, is in their willingness to completely open up their designs to anyone. In an industry defined by lockdown products, closed ecosystems, and guarded knowledge, this is a bold move. For example, the source files for all the CNC milled and 3D printed parts of the blender are available on a public repository online. This means as a user, you could go to a fab lab or repair cafe and print your own replacement parts without ever actually having to go back to OpenFunk. In fact, the files and documentation are so complete that you could even, if you really wanted to, build an entire mixer from scratch. What this also means is that OpenFunk's products can be kept in circulation indefinitely, regardless of what happens to the company in the future. Even though, even if we don't exist anymore or we we don't produce this part anymore, from the moment that this part will be accessible to the people by, for example, open source, GitHub, and so on, uh, then uh, this part could be remanufactured uh, locally. And this is also was one of our design strategy from the start to make this possible. Another benefit of this is that it reduces both the costs and emissions associated with returns and repair logistics, whilst essentially enabling OpenFunk to provide global support for their products. Now, we've already covered loads of principles for circular economy design in this video, like repairability, modularity, and user attachment. But another one that also frequently comes up in circular design frameworks is standardization. The use of common parts and interfaces that allow products to be repaired, upgraded, and reused across generations rather than being locked to a single model or brand. The third and probably my favorite feature of this entire design is the fact that the container that comes with the mixer has the exact same dimensions and thread as a standard TO82 jar used in the food industry. What this means is that you're not actually tied to the containers sold by OpenFunk. You could take any old jam jar from the supermarket and use it with the OpenFunk mixer. And on the functional side as well, if you wanna prep and store what you've blended, there's no need to buy a whole new set of containers. You could just simply reuse the empty jars you already have lying around at home from the supermarket. Now finally, apart from the ones I've already mentioned, OpenFunk employs various other circular strategies and works hard to close all their material loops. One thing I find really cool is that not only does OpenFunk use 100% recycled content in the panels of their blender, but once the product reaches the end of their life, they can actually send these panels back to the original supplier, who'll then turn them into new recycled plastic. So is the product perfect? Probably not. For a start, over 300 pounds for a blender is hardly an inclusive price. For circular products to truly have an impact, they must be accessible to everyone not just eco-conscious consumers with money to spend. 
Hopefully this is something that will come with time and scale. And this is something the founders say will require close collaboration with their suppliers. The suppliers are other small and medium sized businesses out of Europe, many of them, uh, which also have capacity up to a certain level. It's more like a web, uh, a web of nodes that are all held together and they work within a certain uh, scale. I've linked OpenFunk's website below, which contains loads more information about their mission and their other circular initiatives. If you like this video, you might like some of my others, like this one about the more systemic barriers holding back the transition to a circular economy. As always, I'm Luke, and this was The Upshift.